I'm going to be talking about the problem I was having earlier with the gears binding. When you get a cluster of three gears and you're adding a fourth gear, uh, what will often happen is it'll engage the first gear it comes into contact with, but the next gear it will, uh, it will bind. So you can see the problem I was having before is right there. So it, it engages fine here, but then it starts to bind uh, right in there. And uh, you can't lock it into place, and then you can't move any of the other, any of the other panels. So I tried to address this uh, in a few different ways. Uh, one, I put these little magnets in on each uh, square right underneath the main, uh, the main bolt. Uh, some of these I use stainless, and these I use regular steel. I was hoping the bolt or the nut on the bottom would be enough to hit the magnet, but I think with the extra weight of the gear and the mechanism, that I will have to add a uh, just steel hardware so that additional magnet, uh, the additional steel should create a stronger lock on that magnet. Uh, the other thing I did was I beveled all the teeth of all of the gears, including the drive gear and the uh, free spinning gear. And what I did is I created a 45 degree uh, chamfer or bevel on the edge of each of the teeth, and so. That allows um, some of the, sometimes you don't even get this. Because sometimes just the bevel of the teeth will allow that gear to slip in the right place at the right time. Uh, but quite often, more than I'd say probably eighty percent of the time, you get this binding happen. So I, I originally come at it a couple different ways. Initially, I was thinking about doing this little ramp here, so and having this main bolt come forward and backward and have a bunch of have a couple springs. So that as you came across that little ramp, the gear would come up and then drop into place in a cluster. So the idea was that this gear would lift up and then pop into place. Uh, that was kind of ridiculous. Uh, just it was over-engineered and I wanted some time to think about it. So the second option I had come up with was a couple of springs underneath the gear and one on top of the gear. And what this would allow me to do is pull the gear up with some assist of the spring from underneath, and then the top spring would push the gear back down. Uh, again, this was I felt it was a little over over designed, a little more complicated than I wanted. So I was able to simplify it where we have our panel, uh, there's a spring underneath it, then the bearing, then the gear, then there's a washer, and then this top piece here. So what essentially can happen is you can push down on this area here, I'll show you up here, you can push down and the gear will go underneath the gear next to it. So as this is spinning, normally it would just bind and nothing would happen. Uh, but what you can do is as this is spinning, you can push down and then as you lift up or go into place, it will lock in. And to get out of that position, you do the same thing. You just push and it comes right out. So it just, it's a lot smoother, it's simpler, and you're actually using the force of moving the panel because you actually push down as you're moving a panel into another square. So you're using that force to push down to also allow that gear to kind of slide into place and out of place. Um, so besides that, I think we're ready to go. I, we might be adding a scoreboard, some, you know, to kind of keep track of time. So I may be doing some of the logos and some of the branding on that. And then uh, right now I have it propped up and I think I'm going to create a stand that um, it can prop up against. But everything's going pretty good and I think a lot of this can go into uh, to a larger scale piece. And I'm pretty happy with it. So we're wrapping it up.